That's strange tutoring? Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We'll be talking about electrolytes and non-electrolytes. I'm going to try to do this in under six minutes just because I know there are many, many uh, excited scientists that want to come onto these videos, learn what something is about, the basic concept, and dip. So I'll try to make this quick for you guys. So let's get right into it. So what is an electrolyte? An electrolyte is a substance that produces ions in solution when dissolved in water. Other characteristics involve it will dissociate into positive and negative charged ions and will conduct electricity. So let's back it up a bit. Hi, how are you? Back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. You have the wristband? No. What I really want to do here is uh, cut out all the garbage because in some of these definitions, there's so many other big words or things thrown in that you may not understand and it defers you from understanding that original definition. So let's go ahead and dissect this. A substance that produces ions. This is an electrolyte. This is a substance that produces ions. So what is an ion? An ion is something that will have a negative or positive charge. For example, we have Na and Cl. Um, chlorine and sodium. Sodium has the positive charge and chlorine has the negative charge. So these are called ions. Anything that has a positive or negative charge. Another characteristic of these electrolytes is it will dissociate into positive and negative charged ions. Dissociate means separate, uh, being detached, right? So typically what will happen is when you put sodium chloride into an aqueous solution of, or water, these NaCl's will separate into ions. So this is what they mean when they say it will dissociate into positive and negative charged ions, meaning they'll separate because we know NaCl is typically together, but what will happen when you put it in water is it will dissociate. Another characteristic is that it will conduct electricity. So an ion will dissociate and it will conduct electricity. So what is conduction? Conduction is the transfer of heat or electricity through a material object or substance. So for the sake of this video, we'll keep it with electricity, where there will be a transfer of electricity through a material object or substance. This is a characteristic of uh, an ion. It's able to conduct electricity, meaning it can flow. It's able to move. It's a good conductor. And this becomes important in the body for certain membranes, osmosis, and uh, other biochemical processes where we need that ion to be able to flow. If it's not able to flow and get to where it goes, then your body will not be able to do the function that it needs to do. On the contrary, we have non-electrolytes. So non-electrolytes is the complete opposite of an electrolyte. This is a substance that does not produce ions in solution, meaning these boys will not separate. And we'll see in the next slide exactly what that means. They will not separate. They will not dissociate into positive and negative charges, and they are not good conductors. So we can see an example here where we have water and some sugar. And then to our right, we can see if put in, you'll typically hear them say aqueous solution because it's so fancy. That just means they're putting in some water or something like that. We put sugar in water and you can see these guys are hugged up like sardines. These boys are not separating. They love each other. And then to our bottom, we have an electrolyte where we have salt and ACL, you put that boy in water, you see they separate into positive and negative ions. So that is the main difference of an electrolyte and a non-electrolyte. The electrolyte will dissociate in water and conduct electricity like this boy here. Then we have our non-electrolyte. They're hugged up. They're not going to dissociate. They're not going to detach. They're not going to run away from each other. They're hugged up like sardines. And that is a non-electrolyte. Further, we can categorize these into non-electrolyte, weak electrolyte, and strong electrolyte. And big shout out and thank you to Nagua. I hope I'm saying that right, but they are a website that has lesson plans, videos, and things like that. And they have this very nice drawing here because I'm a poor artist. So if we look to our left, we can see we put glucose in water. And again, hugged up. These guys are not budging. They're kind of like those... Uh, those people in a group in a club 
are just hugged up against the wall. They don't want to dance on the dance floor. They're just, just hugged up. So this is a non-electrolyte because it doesn't dissociate. They're not separating from one another. They're, they're afraid to dance. You have this other group that's in the club. You know, some of them are separating from each other. You can see a positive and negative. Others are a little bit hugged up. You know, they're not really moving. But for the most part, most <laughs> some of the group is separating while others are still, you know, hugged up. This is a weak electrolyte. Weak. They have weak dance moves. Those boys have that strong, strong dance moves on the floor are the many ions or the strong electrolytes because all of them are separating. They're like, we're not wall bangers. We're all going our own way. We're going out to the floor. We're going to dance because we're not scared. So all these guys are separating and this causes many ions, uh, positive, negative. And these are our strong electrolytes. These are our strong dancers. So we have our strong dancers. You know, the guys that are kind of trying, kind of here. And then we have the ones that, you know, we're wall bangers. We ain't going anywhere. So I hope that explains to you guys what an electrolyte is, a non-electrolyte, the non-electrolyte, the weak electrolyte, the strong electrolyte. You guys like that, right? I didn't even pause or mess up on that. So look at this video a few times so you guys can distinguish the differences. Uh, and I'll see you guys next video. Peace.